communication service providers have been mulling over ways to make their operations more efficient while cutting down costs. And for this purpose, they have been increasingly looking to bring forward a novel, software-driven future. To speak more about this, I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Bunn, Senior Vice President of SaaS Business Operations, Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. So, Mark, since we spoke last year, what have you seen in the uptake and progress made with Telecom Software as a Service, or SaaS, in 2023? Thank you, Yanni, for uh, having me back and for this time to give you an update on the progress that we've made. Um, I've been uh, very excited about the progress that we've, we've seen. Just as a reminder, um, Software as a Service is not uh, unique to even to this industry, but it certainly is unique when it comes to uh, operations at the network level. And so when we refer to telecom SaaS, that's what we're talking about, software that's running in or near the network, but is being provided as a service at a high level of scale. Uh, And so towards the, or in the midst of that journey, um, what we have seen is We've moved as an industry from, I think, uh, reluctance probably is a fair characterization. Uh, The same way that we saw some reluctance to cloud adoption several years ago, uh, there was reluctance that we'll talk about here in a minute uh, to adoption of software as a service to acceptance uh, and acceptance in particular areas. Now, um, the evidence of that is that we do Indeed, at Nokia, have customers running software as a service in some of our domains. Um, the the count is meaningful, uh, and the revenues that we've been able to generate is meaningful. It's material, uh, but more importantly, is that the customers that are using our software as a service are sharing that they're getting real value from it. Uh, for example. Uh, We have one service that runs adjacent to the network that focuses on energy savings of the RAN network. A very important topic and an ESG topic for many uh, comms providers today. Uh, And our customers that are running that service are seeing meaningful savings as a result of the use of that service. And that's just one example where our customers are, are receiving value. Uh, Also notable, um, I'm often asked if there are certain regions that are more open to the concept of running cloud and software as a service. And certainly that the answer to that question is yes, especially uh, when you consider uh, different uh, data sovereignty and regulations, um, laws, et cetera, uh, across the globe. However, When we look at the footprint of our customer base that we've established to date, it's um, highly distributed. We have customers really in every major region, uh, and that continues to grow. And so we're expecting uh, to end this year with a significant number of customers, significant revenue, uh, as well as to see uh, the footprint of our services grow across the globe. And why should customers, especially those in the telecom industry, prioritize and care about the adoption of telecom SaaS solutions? Yeah. um, Now, obviously, I'm biased because I'm driving software as a service for uh, for Nokia. Uh, But I got into this business because I believe in it. And I believe this is the right natural step for the telecom industry. We, as I mentioned before, we were reluctant to to take up cloud some years ago, at least take up cloud in the um, in the context of the network. But yet today we have networks that are running on public clouds. Uh, and so the, the obvious stage or step that we need to take, especially considering that the whole premise of 5G is a move towards a service oriented architecture is to adopt software as a service uh, in the network, in and around the network. Um, As we do so, I think we're going to see some distinct advantages. Uh, So the one obvious advantage would be that the provider of the software, the one who is most able to 
uh, manage the software, operationalize it on behalf of the customer is the one that's doing so. Uh, I think there's tremendous benefits to that. I, I, um, I've often uh, wondered and have even heard verbalized some of my customers ask, well, why, if I didn't build the software, why would I presume that I would be the best one to operation, uh, to run the operations for the software? And I agree with that. Now, I get that there are some restrictions that make that easier said than done, but it is a clear advantage to the customers to have the experts run the software. But even beyond that, Software as a service offers some distinct advantages around uh, total cost of ownership, as well as uh, improved time to value. On the total cost of ownership side, I know that there's you know, some controversy uh, uh, about whether uh, software as a service is uh, results in savings that are greater than that of running an on-premise uh, software yourself. However, when you take into account all of the costs associated with running uh, the data operations, as well as procuring and keeping updated hardware, um, the most, uh, most of the advocates, most of the experts conclude that software as a service does produce real savings. Uh, and in fact, there have been studies that have shown that. Uh, but on time to value, and perhaps maybe the most important of the topics to consider. Um, we've made big investments in this industry in 5G technology, and uh, we still haven't def determined how it is that we see the ROI on those investments. Uh, one of the areas of focus um, needs to be on experimentation around new revenue streams, uh, and that in, in my view, uh, is best done in using a model that allows you to move quickly, to accelerate the pace by which you bring new services online, and then allows you to learn quickly, even fail quickly, to decommission services if they indeed aren't um, proving to be valuable. Software as a service is key to that. And in fact, we have some uh, data now with our initial services that shows that we are able to get our services launched much faster than historically the historical norms of launching services in this industry. So those are some of the key elements. I think one, maybe one more that is important to consider and that is that as we've moved as an industry to, to uh, cloud technologies and specifically have adopted cloud te native technologies to align with the, the 3GPP standards, uh, the world of managing software has not gotten easier. It's actually gotten more difficult in a variety of different areas. The technology uh, itself for cloud native is... is um, uh, is uh, uh, not easy to manage. And then as we see the um, network actually distributing, we see that there are in additional you know, security uh, attack vectors that are opening up as a result of, of the evolution. Um, these require skills that are um, sometimes challenging to acquire, but also very challenging to keep, uh, keep and retain. And so asking the vendor, the specialist of the software to keep those um, uh, techno technological and security parameters uh, under uh, control on behalf of the, the operator, I think is a, a clear advantage for the operators to, to adopt this model. You mentioned the world of... Uh telecom SaaS and software in general is becoming more difficult. So what do you see as the primary hurdles or challenges that telcos face when considering a SaaS-based solution? And how are these being addressed? Um, yeah, we now that we've been doing uh, offering software as a service for the last couple of years, we have a lot of learnings. Uh, the patterns, though, are, are very clear. Um, there are a few concerns that get raised repeatedly, uh, all of which we have worked to address. Uh, one um, is financial. The, this industry has been largely dominated by uh, CapEx models. And 
by its nature, software as a service and cloud for that matter, are OPEX models. Now, if a company comes to us and they want to use exclusively CapEx models, there are ways to structure deals such that they can take advantage of software as a service in a, in a CapEx model. But that is one concern that is raised um, uh, routinely. Um, another is control. I've touched on it a bit already. Uh, the operational control, it could be due to regulations that are imposed by the geography in which a, an operator um, is functioning and operating. Uh, it could be concerns around data sovereignty or just data security, but for whatever the reason is, operational control becomes one of the key obstacles for customers to adopt cloud and, and ultimately to adopt software as a service. Uh, and then a third is security, as I've mentioned uh, before, uh, for some of the same reasons, there are just concerns that the operators have, or there may be regulations that are governing the security and the privacy of the data. Now, for all of these, we have answers. I've already touched on the one for financial, but for operational and security, um, we do have very robust uh, operational and security models in place. Uh, to make sure that we're managing your data in an optimal way uh, and you know, keeping it encrypted as well as protected from the attack vectors that I've uh, previously mentioned. Uh, and then to give an extra level of comfort um, and confidence to our customers, we have our operations and security monitored and evaluated by third parties. Um, such as GSMA, SAS, and uh, by ISO um, 27001, these accreditations should give our customers the confidence that we are uh, not only operationally strong and mature, but also that we are taking the greatest precautions to secure their, their, uh, their, op their data and their, their service. Based on the current trends and your expertise, what are your predictions for the telecom SaaS landscape in 2024? Ah, 2024. Okay, so this this requires me to look into my my crystal ball, Yanni. Um, but using some experience that we have now over the last couple of years with customers and the feedback that customers have given us, as well as feedback that I've received from uh, various stakeholders in the industry, such as analysts, I think for me, it's pretty clear. Uh, first of all, the concept of telecom SaaS, it's, it will continue to take hold. So we're already seeing the momentum building. Um, as I've mentioned, we have a material number of customers and we have a lot more in, in our pipeline. Uh, I think it's, if for all the reasons that we've already talked about, it's going to be increasingly important for our customers to, to take advantage of technology that's going to allow them to experiment faster with a measured investment, uh, as well as to ex expand the, the sharing of the responsibility, the operational responsibility with not only the hyperscalers who they are currently sharing that responsibility with, but also with their, their uh, software vendor partners. So I think that's one. I think a second is I, I see this year, 2024, being a, a defining year for core network as a service. Now, that's a little surprising to me. If you go back a couple of years, um, I made some predictions about when core would come online as a service and, and they're further out than the demand has been. Uh, I think what's going to happen, though, is that operators will start with experimentation, uh, especially as they're moving from the non-standalone version of the 5G network to the standalone version. This would be an area where taking advantage of core SaaS may make a lot of sense. Uh, and I think one of the key reasons why the operators will want to move to core as a service especially for new lines of business, uh, those business, uh, new businesses or new revenue streams with which they're experimenting is for the, one of the reasons I already talked about. Um, there's 
intricacies and complexities related to deploying and managing this cloud native core and doing it in a secure way that um, indicates that there's some usefulness for the vendors themselves, software vendors to manage that on behalf of the customer. Uh, a third is security. I've mentioned it, but the the need for managing a, uh, an expanding network, one where a lot of the data now is going to be processed at what we call the edge or close to the point of consumption requires automated security assurance solutions. And so I think we're going to see a rising demand for those kinds of solutions. And then finally, uh, this is talked about quite a bit in the industry. I think there will be a dawn of programmable networks and telecom oriented APIs uh, in 2024. Now we've been talking about it for sure, but I think what you're gonna see the difference being that vendors are going to produce solutions to enable the network to um, be opened and to uh, allow ecosystems of development communities to build applications on top of those networks. Mark, thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Looking forward to speaking again next year. Oh, thank you very much for the time and, and I, I look forward to it as well.